Hello and welcome to the Arcadis video series on economics. Here we will further explore the world of economics and learn to apply our model of the market mechanism to various scenarios. But why do we need economic models in the first place? Well, the economy is a complex system with countless individuals making decisions that impact markets and attempting to analyze all these decisions and their effects simultaneously would be overwhelming. Therefore, we employ simplified versions of the economy, our models, which allow us to isolate and examine changes using the universal language of mathematics. Now, let's delve into our model of the market mechanism. We have a demand curve that represents our buyer's willingness to pay and shows how the quantity demanded responds to changes in price. Similarly, we have a supply curve that illustrates how the quantity supplied responds to changes in price. And in an ideal scenario without external interventions, the market will always reach equilibrium, the point where supply equals demand, resulting in neither a shortage nor a surplus. Demand and supply might change, however. Demand, for example, is changing when the willingness to pay for the product in question is changing. This might happen for several reasons. Firstly, income plays a large role. An increase in income typically increases the willingness to pay for certain products. For example, you go to the restaurant more often to eat pizza when you have a higher income. For certain goods, this relation might be opposite, however. Those are so-called inferior goods. So if you get a higher income, you might eat more pizzas at the nice restaurant, but you may eat less frozen pizza from the supermarket. Other reasons may include demographics, more customers means more demand, trends, expectations and developments on other related markets. The relation between such two markets can either be complementary, people typically buy two products together, think of fries and ketchup, bicycles and helmets or gaming consoles and games, or the products might be substitutes for each other. So consumption of one good replaces consumption of the other. Think of Coke and Pepsi, iPhones and Samsung, or coffee and tea. Depending on that relation, of course, what happens on one market may change what happens on the other. If the price of a complement increases, willingness to pay for the given product will be lower. People demand less PlayStation games if they cannot afford or do not want to afford the console. And on the other hand, if the price of a substitute increases, people will switch to the alternative. So if Coke becomes more expensive, demanders will want to buy more Pepsi. As you know, all these changes will be represented by a shift of the demand curve, either up and to the right if willingness to pay increases, or down and to the left if it decreases. The same logic applies to the supply curve. This curve represents all quantities for which the companies make a profit. So where the revenue generated from supplying the goods exceeds the costs to produce it. And accordingly, anything that changes production costs will change supply. So if costs increase, our supply curve shifts up and to the left. And if costs decrease, the supply curve shifts down and to the right. So there we have it. This is our representation of any given market we try to analyze from now on. We will take this model and apply it to four different markets you all should be familiar with. We will look at the markets for pumpkins and strawberries between June and October, as well as the markets for chocolate Santas in December and for chocolate bunnies in May. So let's start with pumpkins first. Let's specify what we are talking about. Here it is the market for pumpkins in Germany. You, for example, are part of that market when you enter the supermarket and either buy pumpkins or you don't. Demand for pumpkins will probably be rather elastic since there tend to be a lot of substitutes while supply of agricultural products tends to be a little more inelastic than other products. Farmers typically harvest a certain quantity and will have to sell no matter the price. So our market probably looks something like this in June with the accompanying equilibrium price and quantity. Now, what happens in October? Well, in October, pumpkins are in season in Germany and nearby countries, which of course means that production costs for pumpkins fall since they no longer have to be shipped here from far off locations. Hence, the supply curve will shift down and to the right. With the lower production costs, our farmers need lower prices to break even, so they will supply more pumpkins at the current price. By the way, to simplify things, we exclude any sort of Halloween demand effects here in October. In later videos, we will come back to such multiple changes. 
So anyway, at the June price, we now have a surplus of pumpkins. Suppliers will supply a higher quantity than demanders are willing to buy. Hence the price decreases and quantity demanded increases until demand equals supply again. In the end we see that pumpkin prices have decreased and quantity has increased, which is something you can verify each autumn in your local German supermarket. You are going to see more pumpkins than before at lower prices. Now as you might have noticed we follow a stepwise procedure with our market mechanism analysis. So here's a manual for that type of analysis. Step 1. Define the market. Which market are we talking about? What is the product? What's the location? Be as specific as possible. Step 2. Set up the model. Draw the respective demand and supply curves and identify the initial equilibrium. Consider elasticities too. Do you think demand or supply have an especially high or low elasticity? If yes, draw the curves accordingly. Step 3. Identify the changes. You will be confronted with an event or development that will have an influence on the market that you analyze. Will that change production costs? If yes, the supply curve is going to shift. Will it change the willingness or ability to pay for our demanders? Then it will shift demand. Step 4. Model the change. Shift the curves and see whether a shortage or surplus results. If the event increases production costs, you shift the supply curve up and to the left and oppositely if costs decrease. And you shift demand up and to the right if the willingness to pay increases and vice versa. After you have shifted the curve, take a look at what results if the price does not change from its initial value. You will either see a shortage or a surplus. Step 5. Find the new equilibrium. Now there are only two options for prices. In case you identify a shortage, prices will increase and in case of a surplus, they will decrease. And the intersection will now show you how the quantity has reacted because that may either increase or decrease as well. In the end, there are four possible outcomes for any change. Price up, quantity up, price up, quantity down, price down, quantity up and price down, quantity down. And finally, step 6. Summarize and explain your results. So let us apply this manual to our three remaining examples starting with strawberries. Step 1. We discuss the market for strawberries and compare June and October. Step 2. Here is the market model for strawberries. Again rather elastic demand and inelastic supply. Step 3. In October strawberry season in Germany is over. Hence it becomes way more expensive to supply strawberries. Our suppliers need higher prices to break even and therefore step 4. The supply curve shifts up and to the left resulting in a shortage at the old price. More people demand strawberries than our producers are willing to supply. So the new equilibrium step 5 will mean higher prices and lower quantities because demanders react by lowering the quantity demanded and we move along the demand curve to the new price quantity combination. And now to our chocolate Santas and bunnies. We analyze the German market for chocolate Santas and compare October to December and we analyze the chocolate bunny market in Germany and compare March and May. For both markets we can assume regular elasticity since there seem to be no obvious reasons that suggest otherwise. So here we have our initial equilibria. On both markets something is now changing as time goes by. In December Christmas season is approaching and people have a higher willingness to pay for chocolate Santas just as the willingness to pay for chocolate bunnies clearly goes down as soon as we enter May and Easter is over. So for Santas the demand curve shifts up and to the right and we see a shortage and for bunnies it goes down and to the left and a surplus results. In the end we can see prices moving. The price for Santas is increasing in December and the suppliers react by supplying a higher quantity and vice versa the price for chocolate bunnies goes down in May and suppliers react by supplying a lower quantity. And here we see something important. In both cases prices and quantities move in the same direction. Chocolate centers are more expensive and we see more of them in supermarkets. In December P goes up, Q goes up. While the opposite happens with chocolate bunnies in May. Lower prices and lower quantities. For our pumpkin and strawberry examples we saw something different. Their prices and quantities moved in different directions. More pumpkins at lower prices and fewer strawberries at higher prices. Those results were not random because as you might have noticed the origin of the change plays a key role. If demand shifts and therefore prices change the supply side is reacting. 
We here have to distinguish a movement off the whole curve and a movement on the curve. So if any outside event is leading to higher or lower willingness to pay for the product, the whole demand curve is going to shift. This will create a shortage, pressuring prices to increase or a surplus leading to lower prices. And this change of the price now triggers a reaction of the other side of the market. Quantity supplied either increases, suppliers see that people like their chocolate to be Santa shaped and therefore provide a higher quantity of that, or they see that people no longer like their chocolate shaped as a bunny and hence supply less of that. This reaction will necessarily go in the same direction as the price change. Higher demand creates a shortage leading to higher prices and therefore to a movement on the supply curve towards a higher quantity or the other way around. If now the supply side triggers a change of our market, it will be different. Now costs are changing and therefore the whole supply curve is moving. Again, either producing a shortage, higher prices or a surplus, lower prices. But now it is the demand side that reacts. And of course, the reaction of demanders to a changing price is exactly opposite to a supplier's reaction. While suppliers like a higher price and increased quantities, demanders do not and accordingly quantity demanded is reduced. So therefore, when the supply curve moves, we either see lower prices which trigger a positive reaction of quantity demanded and we end up with more products being traded on the market, pumpkins in October, or the opposite, decrease of supply, shortage, higher prices, lower quantity, strawberries in October. Now we have it. A complete model for any given market. We can use this to explain a lot as it is very versatile and can be applied to lots of different situations and will let us draw meaningful conclusions. Of course, this is the most simple version of our model. We can think of countless examples where the model does not really work. For example, when we have a monopoly or when the state is intervening by demanding taxes or imposing price controls. But also in those cases, the model will prove very useful since it can be applied and extended to fit those situations as well.